In this tutorial, we will be using the free online Pixlr software that's very similar to Photoshop to make a piece of concept art like this of a futuristic city. In short, we will draw the shape of a skyscraper with the polygon lasso tool, fill it with the color of a distant building, set the blending mode to darken and add other details and set them to screen. To start, you'll need to go to the link in the description below and download the source image of the city from the source images for tutorial folder. You can use this image here, or if you're one of my older students, then you may want to use one of the images from the other cities in the morning. Any image of a landscape or of a city where the buildings in the distance are silhouetted and seem to have very low detail on them would work well. Any images where the buildings in the distance are too detailed or too bright, your buildings will end up looking fake. Anything with a foggy morning would be perfect for some concept art like this. So once you've downloaded this picture by right click download or double click download, it will come up at the bottom of your Google Chrome. Now go to pixlr.com slash e, p-i-x-l-r dot com slash e, and drag your image in from the bottom of Google Chrome into Pixlr. If it doesn't come up at the bottom of Chrome, then you may need to drag it in from your downloads folder like this. Choose create new. Choose Ultra HD, hit apply. Your image will now be in Pixlr like this. The first thing you'll need to do for any building that you add is to create a new layer for it to be on. Do this by clicking on the plus button just here and choose empty. You can now zoom in with the scroll wheel on your mouse to a portion of your picture. You can pan around left or right with the scroll bars or by holding the space bar on your keyboard and dragging with the mouse. Check that you are on your new layer. If the layer is green and it says layer one or layer two like this, then you're ready to start doing your building. The easiest way to make sure you get the angles right is to start off with a rectangular selection tool, which is this button here. It's M on the keyboard. Drag a rectangle that's about the height of your building into your image. I'm just zooming out here to make sure it's about the right height. It doesn't matter where it is yet. The next step is to choose a color of a building in the distance. To do this, click on the top color over here, and I'm going to choose one of these distant buildings over here. I would choose any building that is lighter than the shade I've selected here. Anything that like this is a bit too dark and will look too close to the camera. So something like this would be perfect. You can type in the exact color code here if you like. Hit OK. Now go to the paint bucket tool on the left. Move your mouse over to your selected area. Again, checking that you're still on the correct layer and fill it in. You now have a brown rectangle. You will now want to deselect by going to select, deselect or control D. This building doesn't look very futuristic. Let's cut some pieces out of it to make it look more futuristic. In Google Drive, in the link below, there's a folder called Inspiration and see what other futuristic buildings people have designed. Notice that none of them are perfect rectangles. There's always something missing from the top or something being taken out of the sides or there's bridges in between structures. Some of the buildings even have holes in them like this. Notice that many futuristic buildings in concept art seem to have this 45 degree angle cut out of them at some point which just seems to help make them look more futuristic. You can be creative and add giant pyramids or abstract structures in the distance. To cut pieces out of this building, you'll now need to go to the lasso tool, which is L on the keyboard. At the moment, it's set to free mode, which will be too wobbly for what we need. So instead, go to the polygon mode. I'm going to zoom in with my mouse scroll wheel to the top over here, and I'm going to slice off a corner of my building. To do this, I'll create a triangle shape with this tool. So I'll do click and I'll let go of my mouse. I'll click again somewhere else. And now I need to just complete my shape by going around the outside of the building like this and clicking near where I began. When you click near where you began, you've completed your selection and you can just simply hit the backspace or delete key on your keyboard or go to edit clear. Please make sure before you hit delete or backspace or clear that you do have something selected. If you had an error then saying that you can't delete because you don't have a layer selected, click on your layer over here. If you make a mistake with the selection tool at any point, you can hit escape at the top left of your keyboard multiple times to undo the last point that you did and again to come out of that entirely. If you want your building to look ever so slightly at an angle to the camera so it looks more natural, then you may just want to do a very shallow slice off at the top. My younger students don't worry about this step. 
a shape like this would be great and then click where you started and hit to delete you can see here i'm on the wrong layer so i'm going to do Control z on the keyboard to undo and go back to the correct layer and try again even though that was a very subtle shape your brain starts to make this look like a 3d object to cut a hole in your building, again, zoom into your building and just simply create the sort of shape that you'd like to cut it out by, like this, and move your mouse back to where you started or double click to go back to where you started and hit delete. And that should clear that out. I'll do the same thing down here with my polygonal lasso tool, click, click around like this and hit delete. You may want to extend a shape onto your building. To do this, simply go back to your polygon tool. You need to keep reselecting the tool from the top here. And if there's nothing selected, then you can click away. If there is something selected, then you can do add to selection. But I'm just gonna click like this to add to the shape of my building, some kind of 45 degree shape and double click to finish your loop. It doesn't matter if on the inside of this building here, your angles are strange because when you go to the paint bucket tool and fill it in, you won't notice anyway. Once you've finished, you can go to select, deselect, and now you're ready to blend your building into the distance. To do this, get your selection tool or the arrange tool at the top, which is V on the keyboard. And now you can move your building roughly where you'd like it to be. Now click on the three dots to the left of your building and change the blend mode to darken. This will automatically cut the bottom of the building out, it would seem, and place it into your image at the same distance as any other building of that color. So as the buildings get further away, they get more pale. So the darker buildings will appear in front and paler buildings will appear behind. You can now repeat this process with every other building to finally create your image that will end up looking something like this. But before you do the next building, remember, you have to create a new layer. Choose empty. This layer will go to the top. And again, go back to your lasso tool, choose a polygon tool, make sure the mode set to new selection and zoom into your picture and start painting a shape for your next building. You can't really go wrong with this. These are futuristic buildings and nobody's supposed to know what they look like yet. It's all supposed to be from your imagination. So instead of using the rectangle tool for this building, I'm kind of going free form with it, but you may want to throw in some lines that are as vertical as you can, just so that it looks like it's intentional. Again, before you fill anything in, check that you are on the empty layer. Now go to your color selection tool. I want this building to be even further away. I will choose a lighter color. As I choose this color, notice how the white circle will go up. That means this building will be much further in the distance. I'll hit OK. Now again, check you're on the correct layer, the empty layer over here. Go to your paint bucket tool and fill it in. You can now go to select, deselect, and then go to the three dots by the building and set the blend mode to darken. If you were to move this building now, you can see how much further away it looks. Buildings in the distance may want to be a bit smaller like that. If there's part of a building that you don't like, you can easily come in with your polygon lasso tool again and do dot to dot and click check that you're on the correct layer and click delete. To start to add details to the silhouette of your building, make sure that you click on the correct layer. You can go back to your selection tool, click on the building and then let's zoom into the top and add some antennas. To do this, as long as you're on the correct layer, go down to your shape tool, choose line, set the stroke down to as thin as you need. I'm going to set my stroke down to two, and then I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and drag a line up like this. You can see I've done it in the wrong color. So I'll color pick the color of this building by clicking on the top color here, clicking on the building, hit OK. And then I can either undo like this and just try again. It's usually good to create a little bunch of three aerials or so like this. And if you want to add any more detail using the polygon lasso tool, you can absolutely go in like this and just maybe create some kind of structure up there. Again, it doesn't matter what you do inside the building when you click, but when you join it up, get your paint bucket, you can start to fill in the shape that you've drawn. Sometimes it leaves a little bit out and you might need to click again or get the paint brush out and scribble over it while it's still selected. If you want to give your buildings a slightly more industrial look in certain areas, if you zoom in close, go back to your shape tool, color pick the color of the building, check that you're on the correct layer by using the arrange tool when clicking on it. And in the shape tool, you can use either squares or rounded rectangles to just add a little bit of detail to make the buildings look a bit more grungy. So I'm gonna to go to my rectangle here and you can just see, I need to set both of these colors to the color of the building so that this works properly like this. Maybe a good idea to use a rounded rectangle tool with a very small radius for some of these things like this and it will just give it a slightly more pixelated edge, which just looks slightly more photographic like this. You can see adding details like this help make it look a little bit more believable. 
Another cool detail that you can add would be these little notches or grooves in the side of the building. To do this, make sure you're on the correct layer. If you're not sure, you can always go to your selection tool, click on the building that you want to add the notches to, or you can tick the box for the layer off and on again, just to make sure that it is the correct layer. Then you can go over to your rectangular selection tool, which is M on the keyboard, and you can just drag a thin, long rectangle like this. Maybe go a bit thinner. Then you can just simply hit backspace or delete on the keyboard or edit clear. And then to make sure that each notch is the same width, you can just move carefully the shape selection down. So I'm still in my select tool over here. Move your mouse over the shape selection and you can actually move the selection down to another point and hit delete again like this. And kind of treat it like a cookie cutter or something like that. We can just kind of move it around and just take a little notches of your building like that. It's just a nice little detail that you can add to your stuff. If you accidentally click away from your selection, Control Z or undo will bring it back. You can now use the methods I've taught you to create silhouettes of many other futuristic buildings. What may be a good idea is to try to create a focal point building in the far distance over in the left hand third. To do this, I've drawn quite a detailed building that would look quite cool if it was somehow mirrored. To mirror this, all you have to do is have the layer selected and go to the three dots and go to duplicate layer. Now there's two of them stacked on top of each other. You can move it out of the way with the move tool up here like this and let go. And then you're gonna to wanna to flip it the other way around. So you can go to edit, transform, flip horizontal, and then you can join your building up like this. This often works well with a building where the bottom comes out further than the top. And when you join the buildings together, it creates a shape like this. You will now want to merge these two layers together so that when you move it around the image, it won't come apart. To do that, click on your top layer, which should be the top duplicate building. Now click on the three dots by it and click on the button that says merge down. Don't ever flatten your image. That's the worst thing you can do, but click merge down. You'll now notice that both objects are on the same layer and you can move it where you like. Click on the three dots again, change the blend mode to darken, and now your building will look like it's very far away in the distance like this. A good artist's rule is to try and keep something in as if it was a third of the way into your artwork. You can even use these skills to create a spaceship in the sky as well. Simply draw any wide shape like this. It can be as random or abstract as you like. And then color pick a very distant color of the terrain. For this, I will color pick the brightest color I can see before it gets to the sky. And then I'll hit OK on its own empty layer if you don't have a new one. And then use a the paint bucket to just fill it in like that. Depending on how dark the spaceship is, we'll show how far away it is. So this one's very pale and looks quite far away like this. You can, of course, darken or lighten any images in your scene by going to your layer and going to adjustment, hue and saturation. You can decrease the lightness or increase if needed, and you can adjust the saturation as needed like that. But I'm quite happy with how that is there. You can also hit the three dots for spaceships and change the uh, transparency down as well, as long as they don't overlap. If you're getting bored of making new buildings, you could duplicate a building and flip it around just to make it look more random. So I can go to the three dots by this building, go to duplicate layer, move it over here a bit. I can then go to edit, transform, flip horizontal. I can then scale the building down. And now I want to change its color to be a bit lighter and further away by going to adjustment, hue saturation, and increasing the lightness like this. And I'll need to also increase the saturation as well to suit. If you feel that the perspective of the buildings in the distance should be slightly less, you can edit that with edit, free distort, and just drag one of the sides of the building up like this so that the roof looks more flat. Buildings in the distance will have slightly flatter roofs when seen from afar. And that's it. You're now ready to add in the special effects like windows, fog, planets, and a ball of nuclear fusion.